To me, the way that the three go together is just in terms of sort of the shape of them. Um, the one on the left, everything's sort of heading from the bottom right-hand side to the upper left. Uh, and then the middle one is more straight on. And the right-hand one goes from the bottom left to the upper right. So compositionally, I think it kind of has a uniformity to it. Yeah. a lot because at some points you're looking up and at some points like figures over here are looking down. Hi. Hi. So we just started um, and we're just having a conversation about this work. Um, the way we do this is very informal. Um, you can start wherever you want to and um, you know just be careful about the sculpture. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, but we, we really just started so we were okay. talking about um, the composition and Have you seen this work before? No, I haven't seen it. Who's this? Okay. It's by Art Rosenbaum, who's um, a professor emeritus from Lamar Dodd School of Art, and he's done a couple murals on campus. Um, okay. He's doing one right now for the Russell Library. Um, he's done one for the Wilson Center. Um, but he's um, an artist who, you know, he, he's around a lot locally, so a, a lot of the students have worked with him here. Um, and so he also um, does a lot of audio recording. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hurricane season. If you're going to do this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. In any particular area? 
right down where um, Cine is now downtown. Okay. Um, and it's a lot of things that were happening in Georgia at this time. Um, and this last, I never remember the name of the hill, do you know? The last panel. Where it is? Yeah, it's in here. It's the Watson Mill Bridge State Park. She just Peter passed Mitchell. Within the last year. Peter Mitchell, yeah. yeah. Interesting. And she was very old. She was here yeah. playing when Art was being honored for all of his work yeah. and he was just oh. retired. And she was here with uh, another lady and a fellow who was helping both of them because they were rather elderly. Oh, so that's just recently. That was uh, a few years three ago. Years ago? Three yeah, years actually, ago. I have the catalog from it. Oh. I think it was a little bit longer than three years More ago just because. Time time. Plus. I know. Yeah. She was very passionate, very dramatic. There's such a sense of movement in so many ways. It's and a great sense of rhythm. And yes. This was 2007 was the exhibition. Oh, gosh. 2006 to 2007. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at some of um, Art Rosenbaum's influences, and I just hadn't realized that he was influenced by the German Expressionists, um, and that makes a lot of sense um, to me. I brought, I brought my iPad, um, so I could bring some of them up, but for instance, Max Beckman, and then um, Kathy Kollwitz, mm -hmm. and he actually had um, some of their prints in his room even when he was in college in New York. Um, he went to Columbia for art school, and um, you know they influenced him. And you can kind of see that expressive movement. That but it's so much happier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it, there's an interest for me. There's always with his work an interesting kind of movement and a lot going on, but like a stillness at the same time. And I don't. I think you know, especially like looking at the skateboarders, how they're kind of frozen where they are. Even got on the globes, he's got the sense of mm. hurricane winds going out. Yeah, like almost like there's the like an eye. ominous kind of. It's like the eye, another eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The viewer. Yeah. Well, it's a hand with a cigarette watch, but you have no idea who that is. And so the other thing that he was interested in was a lot of um, narr narrative and, you know, looking at a lot of the artists from the 1930s, the regionalist artists, American scene painters, and how they were documenting what life was like. And he's kind of doing that here, too. He has a lot of the muscle rippling and the wrinkly elements of the regional artists yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. There's something very descriptive about the way he's, he's you know, including the, the specific people and that he is trying to depict what they, they look like um, without really idealizing them. What, what year did you say these, this was painted? This was painted in the 90s. Um, it was done in 99. Bond. This is what he did. This is, he did both of these. But he did both of these? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
but, you know, depicting like, actual scenes that happen, and this was something that, a story that someone else had told him. Mm -hmm. So he's, you know, painting it based on a story from someone else. This is so different because it's contemporary. It's much more abstract, and isn't abstract. it? abstract, yeah. yes, with you know, nothing, you know, you would never think that that was the same artist. I love the colors that he uses. In fact, you know, you can see Very the colors similar. Are similar on both. Yeah, and yeah. he's gotten a lot brighter in, in these, but at the same time, a lot of the colors are still, you know, if you look especially at like the water back here, yeah, you can see the water. Mm -hmm. But the these water. are so much darker. Yeah, you know? yeah, bright, yeah. brighter. And these are more, almost really pastel. Some of them are yeah, those pastel. Are almost pastel. Yeah. Too. Another artist who he, he said was an influence for him was Philip Guestin, um, but particularly Philip Guestin's early work. Later he gets more figurative, but um, these abstract works by him. And you can kind of see that same idea, actually. And who did this? This is Philip Guestin. Oh, okay. I think it's funny that he says it's only the abstract works, because I definitely see that Guestin's so, figurative works look yeah. like Rose and Mom stuff as well. Well, and I think when he was really citing him as an influence, it was when Guestin was doing these abstract works, so it doesn't really mean that he didn't continue. You know, it's not like he was looking back so much and saying, well, right. the abstract works were it. It was that while he was painting those, that that was what was one of the influences that, you know, he talked about. Um, but later, Guestin started doing more of these works, um, you know, like KKK members, and, um, you know, he got much more figurative and, and started including more narrative in, in his works too. So one thing we've done with um, students is we've asked them to, um, and I actually got this idea from one of the art education professors, Carol Henry, um, to come up with a description about the work with just using one sentence. Um, and then when we do it with with um, you know university classes or with school kids, we have them work together to make a poem out of, out of the sentences that they create. Um, and it's really interesting because there's just so much going on. How they kind of wrap up it all into one set, sentence. Um, so I wanted to give you a chance to do that if, if you want to, not to put you on the spot. What comes to my mind immediately is the skaters. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, that seems to be uh, prominent in the picture to me. And there, you're right, and there is that movement, and that kind of swaying movement really carries through the whole work then. Yeah. yeah. The thing that bothers me is that they're facing away from the rest of the work. Right. Right. Um, so I, I know he must have had a reason for that. Yeah. But if we, most in the West, read the works from left to right, so if I do that, it just seems as though they're not they're taking us almost out of the. Yeah, yeah. Okay. you feel like you keep wanting to go this way to see, <laughs> to, see to look more into the picture. And of course, they're not paying any attention to anybody over here either okay. on the right hand side because, of course, the couple's all wrapped up and the banjo player is looking yeah. away. But. Yeah, but well, you know what's interesting though? You know, Art Rose and Mom was making these audio recordings and he's actually put himself in the work as that figure that's moving with the video camera, the one behind. The, the uh, 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 term, uh, do you see him uh, um, in the central panel? And so, you know, he's recording what's going on, and he's the recorder. Um, so it's kind of interesting to think of it that way because, you know, maybe these kids aren't watching what we're doing and aren't really acknowledging us and doing their own thing because we're observers. We're, you know, we're seeing something that happened, but we're not necessarily a part of it so much. Um, and he actually can find it has a really interesting quote um, in this about that. He says he sees himself as some kind of tour guide with oil paint, camera in hand, trying with my craft and visual voice to find pathways through the often incomprehensible, beautiful, and horrible conjectures in this world we travel in. So he's kind of seeing us through it, but you know, what's going on isn't necessarily something that, that we're part of. They're doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. And he's capturing life. Right. With real people, not idealized. They're, and yeah. He's not ennobling them. They look very humble. 
Exactly. Oh. Exactly. They're not dressed for uh, a show. And something that's really interesting, this whole painting was spawned out of the bottom of that shoe in the central it. panel. Was what? It was inspired by this shoe. <laughs> You know, sort of all lit up if you start talking to him, if you can get him to talk. He was very shy. With I guess he came for the, the docent group. Yeah, and I think when told she's us one of our, our community docents at the museum, so she gives tours. And he came for training when he had his exhibition up. Um, it really helps you to have the actual person who created it. Although there were things that he doesn't understand either. Yeah. Which always. Which is why I still like doing something like this, even if he's around to tell us what it means. Um, I think there's a lot of things that we can see in it that, you know, we might interpret differently or we might see a little bit differently. Well, if he's um, videotaping it, then who would be the other figure where you've got a couple of hands with a mic and then at the other end with a movie camera, perhaps? Right, and that doesn't look like him in the... No. So, if, but it usually works alone. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it mm -hmm. says in any of these catalogs who that person on the very far right is. I think I mean, the hands are actually still his hands. His hand, okay. And then would this be his hand? Does he, did he smoke? Yeah. It just says a beard to be on the video camera. I'm not sure actually if he, if he smoked. I don't think anybody asked that. Yeah. We thought maybe the smoke was because of, well actually I was saying <laughs> smoke and fire when it's actually a hurricane. But it does look kind of fiery. It does, especially at the center of the panel. Mm -hmm. And well, even in the house where the boy's standing on the other side of the screen, there looks to be it does look like somewhat a flame. Yeah. Um, like it's very warm. It's very it's, yes. One of the things that I feel like you called my attention to, Jean, when you were talking just now was the sense of rotational mm -hmm. movement. Um, which is something, the more yes. I look at this, the more I see it in everything. And the fan, the fan it's not moving. <laughs> the watch on the, the hand watch. right there, the globe has that, the skaters are moving in that sort of pattern, um, eddies in the water, That's right. the spiral that this girl is drawing right here, and even when you think about um, analog recording means, um, you don't see any of that anywhere, but if you think about tape running in that right. clockwise direction, right. it just seems to be sort of a theme a visual theme. And what is, is, it looks like a disc or something that's, is that part of a skateboarding? I wasn't sure actually oh, about that. Um, yeah, this, that was one of those things that kind of really stuck out to me this time that I hadn't really paid much attention to before. It's hard to think of that as part of a hurricane though with this blue sky. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This moment of stillness. I'm sorry? It could be this moment of stillness, sort of in the middle of all that action and all that movement, but just the way that everyone's frozen. That's the only thing. Yeah. What about in the middle of the eye of a hurricane? I've never been in the middle. Of I mean, I haven't either, but I've heard. I've heard that if you look up, it's this moment of peace and stillness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's something that is very still. You think there's there, the whole picture's in the eye of the hurricane? Not literally. I think probably more metaphorical. <laughs> yeah. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to absorb this. Yeah. <laughs> what the means what he that. wants you to. Yeah, yeah, well, right, but I mean, that, 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 that's a conflict in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like that as a metaphor, just because there is, for me, there's just a sense of stillness in this. Even with all of the movement, it just looks like they're frozen. And that kind of, to me, goes along with that idea of the eye of the hurricane, that there, there's so much movement around everything, but this is kind of a little bit more frozen than that. Except for, except for our Rosenbaum and Center, who they really do show moving. Um, and that's something that a lot of the, um, the scholarship on him talks about in conjunction with Italian futurists, um, who actually, um, there's a really famous work, 
Not so much as an influence, but along parallel lines is Gerhard Richter's painting work also, which is similar in that it'll look, you know, photorealistic, but part of it is blurred as though somebody mm -hmm. has smudged it or somebody has moved within the image. Yeah, yeah, and actually maybe I can bring that up too then. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to find, well, this I is the other one that he did. What she's doing. This is his um, self-portrait with a camera right. from 2001. Oh. So that kind of has that same idea. Yeah. Who was the other famous artist that... Um, French artist that made a portrait of himself in the painting. Yeah. I know. It, it, with the young, he was an art, he had a cap on. It shows him um, actually in a mirror, kind of like a mirror image. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of them did that. Well, this one is particular. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I'm, okay. I'm trying to think because then I can. Mm -hmm. That's true. 
And this is Gerhard Richter. There's some um, works here. And some of these probably aren't actually because they get, kind of get you know lost in Google Images, but um, it gives you some of that same idea. about, he said that he wasn't striving. I, I was kind of surprised. I didn't want to, um, I didn't have the nerve, I guess, to have him go more deeply into it, but he was saying something along the lines of he wasn't trying for a narrative, necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, he these were thoughts, and now that you mentioned the shoe, and it all came together but that he wasn't, it wouldn't be required of us to, to try to tell a story. Right, by looking at right. what all of these. Like that you're not gonna be able to just write out what the narrative is. Right. That that wasn't interesting yeah. to him. So in that sense, it's not so much of the mural or the fresco that we're more used to seeing where there seems to be a story being told mm -hmm. or that you could find a theme in each section because his is more Jumbled. Yeah. You know, and I like the title of the exhibition was Weaving His Art on Golden Looms. And I, I like that idea of almost like a tapestry of, yes. of painting and subject matter coming together. But each one of these lends itself so much to a story. You could write a story. You could. And, each one of these. and then you could put it down and write another story about the same. Yeah, it, it, there's so you know, much. Even though maybe that's what not his intention. Right. Or maybe it is that we can all come up with our own stories and that there, you know, there's many access points to the same work. Mm -hmm. One thing I find that he's really good at is wood. Yeah. The mm -hmm. grain of wood and how it how he shifts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The kind of wood that he's using. And that I think goes along with that swirly idea that, that we've been and talking about. That seems to be important. I, yeah. The other ones, a lot of his Big works seem to have a lot of floor. Yes, and actually, another one that's in our collection, collection the Macintosh Shout Singers, or Macintosh County Singer Showers. Yes, uh, the showers. This one, really. Yes, that's the one. Yeah. That has, yes. Mm -hmm. And it's not only the floor, but no, it's, it's the whole. That, yeah, it's the whole and it really thing. becomes a part of the atmosphere and what's going on. Have you now. ever seen the, any of these folks perform no. live or on television? Or it's, no, no, it's no. It's really. Mm. It's mesmerizing. I think it would bring it up. It's the whole body, the whole spirit, and it's yeah. just, you know, that's it's real soul this music. Uh, very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they put their own heart and soul into it. Yes. Yeah. I would think they'd be very tired after this. Yeah. Makes good music. Uh, what's this blue little sort of? That little corner Corner. right here on the left hand side. Uh, is that supposed to be a pool that they step in? The skaters are using over here. Oh, one here. other ramp. Okay. Coming this way at us. Perhaps just the edge of it. Oh, it could. Oh, well, you could look at that both ways. When you mm -hmm. look at yeah. it, it's coming this way or it's going the other way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it could be the side of it. It could be the actual rail. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we can bring this up. Yes. Yeah. That, that uh, you 
wonder what, why are there steps there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that does, yeah, yeah, that's really going on. Where are those steps? Or could that be going down? down? Yeah. Yeah, the space gets a little bit. So if there's a ramp there, you know, I, I don't, if, you know. Where they're going to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Oh no, he's not losing control. He's think? flipping it around with his feet. Yeah. That's a trick. Yeah. I mean, he could be losing control, but that's what he's trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> he might lose control right after that. But. Yeah. Good question. We'll never know. No. Yeah. 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 Do we have any idea how long it takes him to do? No, actually. Um, I know he did this one and he did a, the India triptych around the same time. Um, this was done in 98 and this was 99. But, you know, as far as like the Russell Library, I don't know how long that's taking. Mm -hmm. You see the kind of the same colors in here that are in Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of similarities. And he, I think, One thing that was interesting um, that I read, he used to paint very directly. You know, he would he he would just kind of paint directly on the white canvas. And um, he started after a suggestion um, from someone to start painting more like the old masters do, where they paint more in a monochromatic style first, and then glaze colors over top of it. Um, and it's kind of interesting, you know, because there are so many colors going on and so much. So much happening, but there seems to be a unity to it, um, and I wonder if it is because that 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 under layer is monochromatic that it's kind of holding it all together. You see a lot of the same colors, the pastel-y kind of colors that we saw in the pa painting mm -hmm. that he showed us yeah. in this first one, but you don't see so much in this one. Very little on the other too. Especially that center one, so warm. There, it, you're right; it, it has almost yeah. a fiery yeah. presence to it. Yeah, that center one stand, uh, comes out at you much more. The other two are more recessive. Yeah. I bet that does have something to do with that warm color coming out. Uh -huh. See. But he did take the time to put a little flower arrangement on that top of that panel. Yes. Like, <laughs> just <laughs> pink and white. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. That's the only thing. I saw that. It picked up that, these colors in the first one right there. And when Art Rosenbaum was at Columbia, they didn't actually have a studio major, so he was an art history major, and he has that background. Um, you know, he's very well versed in, in you know, art history and art historical references. Um, you know, and those flowers right away remind me of something that would have been in like a Northern Renaissance painting as a, a symbol in the foreground. Plus, to show that he can do things. Yeah, well, and it kind of goes, you know, no again with that. Yeah. yeah exactly. with that. Now, is that, is that, do you think, a studio that we're seeing through glass in the back, or is it, or is it just a section of a room? Where Art Rosenbaum is? Right. It's yeah, I'm not sure. And what's going on behind him? That, that was a question that the I The yellow had. thing. Yeah. And that almost, like, ominous looking. Yeah, like from the cave or something. Yeah, I, yeah. And I'm, I'm not actually we'll sure. We'll have to get him over and pick his brain about it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's kind of nice to try to figure out. It's framed like it's in another room. Mm -hmm. It is, like you keep going, going back into space. Like you're going into... You keep going deeper. Yeah. yeah. Going, going down the rabbit hole. It, if it is a studio, you've got the guy here at the console close to the action. And 
if it were a studio thing behind glass, he should be behind the glass too, but yeah. there's no right. separation. We can see as well as shoe is there, of course. On, on so he has scene. to be on, um, close to the performers, right. whereas the one with the, the artist with the camera, Like duct work? Is that a little bit of um, metal duct work behind the, the guy here where the shoe is? It looks like it's done so good. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure. So I don't know what it, it is that these guys need resting on, some yeah. sort of a wood thing. See, why, why is he holding a microphone and behind the, the recorder? That's why I think he's recording the whole session, like what's happening. Like he's he's documenting it. Oh, he's okay. He's yeah. picking up. Oh, I see. And apparently I see he started actually, doing this in high school. He's been yeah, doing she this. She just has a microphone. Well, to he told the story, and we saw the film about. Remember the fellow's name no. that he traveled with, and they went to. Well, they were talking about the mountain folks, mm -hmm. and they were going up and down these remote country roads, and incur actually incurring some hostile folks. Like, well, you can't go here, you can't go there to find these legendary singers or legendary banjo or fiddle players and to record them. And so we got a chance in black and white movie to see folks who look like they were 90, who were only like 35, mm -hmm. you know, very weather beaten. It was during the mm -hmm. Depression time yeah. or later on, maybe in the third, late 30s or early 40s. I don't know. Is yeah, I need to watch it again. It's, it's not yeah, that old. But I think no, it might have been closer to now, but they look like they were back well, in I think the they were living in, yeah, they didn't they have a daughter of property. property. Yeah. And, but to take all their recording equipment, stuff that a lot of these folks have never seen before, coming into these hovels and filming and getting the sound of these characters who, they were working so hard, at, it's surprising they ever could keep up with any kind of, get into one of them. Yeah. the energy to get But it seemed like such a part of their life, that, and that's a part that I remember about watching it, um, and I do need to watch it again, but um, yeah, I remember that they, they just, it was such an integral part of just their culture and who they were and their identities. Yeah. Well, here in this last one, this um, looks like it should be a, a lamp hanging down in the middle of the picture, however, <laughs> you know, you figure, no, that can't be a lamp, but how does that get hung there uh, out in the open? Or is it coming up from the water? Yeah, because it's stop the, the pole stops before it reaches the top. Oh, you think it's, it's actually in the water? Hmm, could be. Hmm. I've not seen anything like that. I've been out there. You have? I've, I've seen, seen the, the waterfall there. did remind me yeah. that it would be. But I don't know what this structure is. They, well, it's all glass, or they're just—it's just wire, I guess, because yeah, it looks like some kind of metal structure. Or metal, yeah. But why? You know, why, how does it fit into mm -hmm. this painting? Well, it does kind of echo one of the things that I'm noticing is there are the, the triangles cut off on the corner of that, mm -hmm. which you can kind of also see in the shutters mm -hmm. are here, and they're in the skate park the and the ramps as well. Uh, yeah, a lot of triangles. Right. Yeah, compositionally, it kind of carries through that. Um, and it's kind of like a triangle. And then also the rectangle, because it's making a more of a elongated rectangle with the reflect its reflection, and that kind of goes along with the shutter.
and it just gives you the time. <laughs> Andy LaMaster. Yeah, and he owns a recording studio, right, Melissa? Yeah. Andy LaMaster, who owns a recording studio. Yeah. Oh, so he's still here? I think he's still in town. I'm not certain. He did bring the pastel silver into this picture. The little girl mm -hmm. who's out of the drawing left in her sweater and paint. Does that look like the, uh, what did you call it? This Watson, area? Watson Mill? What does it look like, Watson Mill? The little waterfall part does, and the way the, rock, the, rocks, the rocks are arranged in the water, but it's, I would only have thought Watson Mill because of the waterfall. I can't speak for it. Is everything where it's supposed to be? Uh -huh. Paul McGrath referred to this, and he's our chief curator. He, And it seems to have a, yeah, a crank on the top, sort of, a wheel up there. 